there a meeting today? Hello. Oh, yeah, I saw that there was a meeting, which so I thought, well, I probably should join. Yeah, um, it's actually been a really quiet couple of weeks um, after KubeCon. Uh, uh, I know in my household, we for the first time had to deal with um, uh, COVID. One of our one of our twins uh, contracted, and is now back to testing negative and on the mend. But oh, well, I've I hope everything largely, is okay. Um, I've been largely off grid, <laughs> to be honest. Oh. Um, uh, so I have a couple of like administrative things to just announce sort of for the record on the video. Um, I know Ryan uh, was going to give again for posterity even, uh, hey man, uh, an update on what's going on with profiling and we have the time to use however we want. But, uh, oh, and Alolita is literally on a plane, or actually rather on a plane at the moment. Uh, so won't be here today either. Uh, so this might be a really fast meeting or maybe we're about to get flash mobbed and we'll have too many things to talk about. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Or is that to everybody? Sorry, I just jumped in. What's up, Eric? Uh, hello. Yeah, I just came to listen and take notes as usual. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, life's life's good. How are you, Matt? Uh, good. There now. I'm just so that something just popped up. Um, things are good. I've been busy. Um, my family's back to being healthy. Like no one's sick, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, and some time it, and mental space is freeing up to catch up on some profiling stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm about a week behind the conversation uh, on the hotel profiling stuff, so I, I'd love to hear an update. But uh. And yeah, I mean, they're I can, getting I mean, warmer and 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 are well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been interesting. Yeah, like it's this is my first time, kind of. Actually, let me answer that question in two seconds. My computer's about to die, and my charger is not here. Okay, so sorry. Ryan's going to handle matters of electricity. Um, I'll be right back. I'll take this opportunity to say that uh, uh, this is the. Technical Advisory Group on Observability's uh, second Tuesday of the month meeting uh, for uh, June 2022. Welcome. Uh, as this is a CNCF event, the Code of Conduct does apply. Um, I guess the three of us <laughs> uh, and whomever else joins uh, will be bound by that and will not violate it. Um, It'll be recorded, so maybe others will see it. Yes. No, actually, I've been looking through uh, some of the numbers on on views and things, and and far more people view these videos than show up. Um, so one of the things that we should probably uh, throw on the agenda for, you know, we'll formally talk about next week after a brief comment period is um, not only for APAC, uh, but you know we might want to move to a every other week or every like every month there are two meetings. One of those meetings should probably be at this time. Uh, but another should be at a time that's better for other time zones and or schedules. So we could just, you know, be interlocked exactly at the wrong time for many people. So, uh, right. Welcome back. So um, I'll say that uh, we're opening uh, nominations for the next two weeks. Um, and we hope to make some nominations uh, to the TOC at their next meeting as part of our update for both technical leads. We have a couple leads on leads. Um, uh, as well as uh, a co-chair. Uh, so if you have any one that you would like to nominate, uh, um, please um, uh, reach out uh, to myself uh, or Alalita and or in the channel. Um, I'll be sending out an email with uh, later on today with specific steps to the list. Um, we've not done nominations before, so it will probably just be a Google Doc or something similar. Um, uh, yeah, do reach out for any questions. So that's one thing. Second, uh, the TOC uh, just a week ago uh, met for their regularly cadenced sandbox inclusion meeting. Um, and I've put in the meeting notes uh, the most recent set uh, of, of votes and decisions about um, sandbox. I think that I had talked with some other, other members a few weeks ago um, uh, newcomers to the sandbox, as well as 
uh, just some people in the community. Uh, and I think that it would make sense if we, as a workflow and as a tag, um, just whenever the new members are added to the sandbox, if we had sort of a welcoming kit, um, a from the tag, but B, you know, with stuff specific to the observability and, and analytics side, um, perhaps something like a survey uh, uh, where they could, you know, in, in a consistent way, we could just collect some information on, you know, do you have open telemetry integration already? Do you have logs? Do you have specific concerns or challenges? Do you, do you have things that you've already done in your project that you think might be a model or a pattern to follow for others as it relates to being able to observe and comprehend uh, the workload that is that project. So um, something like that might make sense. I'm curious what others uh, think. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be mm -hmm. I mean, useful to get, I guess, get a, uh, a common baseline. And I mean, honestly, even for ones that have, I guess, already sort of gone through that process, like, I, I don't know if we know the answers to all those, all those questions, it might be useful to have. Yeah, I'm actually pulling up one issue we have. We've already done some work on defining. Um, so, 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 so an annual sandbox review. Mm -hmm. um, here, uh, it's issue number 80. I'll put it in the notes as well. Um, and somebody had started um, some work on that. And I'll, I'll also say, I guess, while we're on the topic, and again, just for the, the, the video, uh, and we can we can follow up next next meeting um, on the first Tuesday meeting for July. Uh, but in addition to kind of having a bead on sandbox projects um, for incubating projects, there is a yearly um, update or review, you know, that they give to the TOC. Um, you know, we're we're not. We're not in that workflow as like an approver or, or anything like that, uh, but I think it would behoove us, and, and maybe it would it would give uh, it would make space for new contributors to to kind of come come forward and can and contribute and, and actually help out here um, uh, and get more involved with you know just reaching out to projects that are in our scope uh, again uh, and just helping to facilitate you know either quantifying where they're at or what the roadmap is or identifying places where the community might be able to reach out and help that project. Um, so I, I kind of see this as one of the roles of the tag to help facilitate and to facilitate and enable that where possible, um, Bob Shirley. Do you keep a running list of like where you need help with things? That's a great question and we do. Yeah, I thought I, th I wasn't sure. I thought I'd seen that. I'm just not sure where it's at. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pulling up a link right now. Um, so, Seems like a good thing to put in the welcome kit. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe you don't want to yeah. scare people, but no, no, no uh, exactly. Um, here, I'll put it in the chat in the notes. So there's a few different uh, projects that we have. Um, the third one, the the Kanban. Um, Kind of has what's going on, but the issues have a help one and tag. So, um, for example, here uh, there's the query. There's just like a list of all the projects we have to find now that are like, you know, shovel ready. In, in most cases, someone can just pick it, pick it up, and work on it. Um, and then there's also uh, a few that are marked as good first issue versus help wanted, but I haven't really we haven't really been using that, but. Um, the good first issue is like, I have no context on what observability is, but I want to do something to help anyway. I'd say, okay. But, you know, generally the help wanted is the, is the right tag. Uh, and yeah, if, if you're looking to, if, if, you're, if, you, if anyone on the call or watching uh, wants to jump in, uh, that's absolutely possible. Do the links in the chat get recorded into the call? Um, they technically do, uh, in terms of, uh, they, well, so there's two things. There's, um, when I upload them, the videos from YouTube, uh, I do get a, um, 
well, it's not chat, but it's it's the closed captioned, closed captioning. The actual chat is like a text file. Uh, and up until recently, we didn't have a great place to put them um, other than GitHub. I could put them there, but we also just got a Google Drive folder. So if, yeah, I, I could start, um, we, we can start persisting the notes uh, and we can get them for previous meetings too. Like when you log into Zoom uh, as tag observability, you have access to all of the previous recordings and everything. So if you think we should do that, um, I think that's an idea. Is that what you're implying or? Oh, no, I was just, uh, I just wasn't sure. That's all. Oh, yeah. I mean, I usually try to make a habit of um, um, uh, duplicating everything into the actual notes. Um, uh, I think another workflow that I've seen work uh, in places like the Crossplane Project and some of their meetings is um, moving to HackMD or something like that. You know, so we're just starting with Markdown and then uh, committing the notes from the meeting as well as any links and stuff like that from the chat uh, to GitHub. Um, I think Observe K8s, that working group with Ken Finnegan and others, started to do that uh, to try try it out. I rather like it because then uh, you know. I get pulled and you've got all the all the latest stuff. Uh, anyway, other than maybe yammering on about um, the landscape graph project, which I've been tinkering with on the side and I think has some implications for observability and, and for the tag, um, which I can talk about at the end if we need fill time. <laughs> uh, but I, I had planned a more comprehensive overview for our next meeting. Uh, Brian, if you're ready to to give the hotel profiling update. That's really the last thing on the agenda, unless there's other stuff that either sure. of you would like to discuss. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I guess uh, since we've got a, a intimate group here, yeah. I mean, I can give kind of an update, and um, curious if you, you, either of you have any thoughts. But yeah, basically, um, it's it's kind of my first time in the, I guess, like hotel in like an official. Um, sort of like hotel group and so it's been kind of interesting in trying to get this started in that like there was a lot of interest and from the people that I talked to it sounded like there was um, more interest from non for sort of like newbies to hotel than in like I guess previous efforts with like logs metrics and traces and so um, so yeah I, I mean it's been interesting like I would say the um, the biggest thing that we're trying to do is get more of a, um, I guess, get more support from, you know, like the TC members and that kind of stuff so that we are uh, making sure that we're sort of like in line with the, the hotel way of doing things and that we don't present them with some sort of specification that's like totally um, off base from, you know, what, you know, is, is in the uh, realm of like what hotel, hotel is meant to do and, and that kind of stuff. And so, um, so yeah, so anyway, so for the last, so for the first, we've had two meetings so far, the first meeting was just a overview of just um, a lot of different people from a lot of different uh, profiling um, related uh, either companies or functions, open source performance or APM solutions, some of the cloud providers, what's up? Um, can you brief just for other folks that might not be familiar? Uh, can you identify uh, or define uh, you know the open telemetry leadership that you, you met with? You used an acronym or two that's hotel specific. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, and, and that's the other part. I, so, TC is the technical committee. Um, hotel is open telemetry. Um, and you don't have to cover everything. It's just mostly TC. So that's the okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Is yeah. that? Is that? Is that? Three people or fifteen? Uh, like technical, uh, the technical committee? Maybe like eight or something. Um, let me see who is. Um, da, 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 da. I'll dredge up a link while you're talking to. Yeah, there's. I just want to make sure that uh, for newcomers, we're, we we keep the videos kind of accessible. Um, we don't have to cover like intros to everything all the time, but new acronyms. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I can. About that. I got the link here. Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was close, nine. Um, and I will paste it in the meeting notes. Um, I've got their charter here too for anyone curious. So meeting notes, I'll put it up 
where, let's see, where's the part that I'm talking about? Okay, yeah, here you go. Um, so that's the technical committee. Um, so yeah, a bunch of people from various, I guess, yeah, there's typically, yeah, mostly sort of APM providers and uh, like the cloud, you know, Microsoft, Google, Splunk, Facebook, Lightstep, and Dynatrace. Um, and so, yeah, so we're, we're working on trying to get a, I guess, official um, sort of sponsor. Um, I just came from the meeting right before this, where we were talking about um, what that actually looks like. Um, and they're trying to also um, sort of fix that process there and are thinking about using the profiling group as a good sort of like, um, you know, test of updating their docs so that because, yeah, like there is no information on that for us. Um, so anyways, but yeah, what I, what I was saying was that the first meeting was just a lot of people meeting talking about what they would want out of a standardized profiling format. The second meeting was a little bit more about sort of establishing some goals of what a profiling format should or could look like what what things it would solve if hotel were to support profiling officially. Um, and then the third meeting is uh, this Thursday at 8 a.m. or I guess Thursday, June um, June 23rd at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and that meeting will be focused on, there were, we kind of got a, a good, um, we're starting to get a good kind of taxonomy of the various profiling formats and what they can do, what they can't do. And then a couple of companies or people who are using custom profiling formats are also going to share those and explain why they're custom, why existing formats didn't work, and hopefully what things we can incorporate into a new, uh, you know, agreed upon standardized format that would hopefully address all of those issues as opposed to everybody branching off into their own custom formats, which is kind of the goal here is to um to to kind of get one format that everybody can or most people can agree on that will support most of the use cases and um in that way when people build on it going forward they build collectively versus building off in their own little silos um so yeah that's kind of the update there's um yeah there's so far um i can speak on behalf of pyroscope um that uh, we we use a custom format for profiling and we submitted or we um, created a video and a doc that sort of explains what we would like what we would like to see out of a custom format obviously we don't speak for everybody but um, we kind of got the ball rolling there so we'll at least be talking about it and then uh, pixie they also use a custom format they were um, either going to talk this week or next week and then um, elastic which used to be prod filer, um, they also use a custom format. And so those three are using custom. The PProf maintainers were also part of the meeting. They were gonna talk about um, sort of more in general, uh, they, their thoughts on the suitability of just PProf in its current form and um, you know, what improvements it might need. And then, um, and then we're still looking for someone to contribute to the JFR part of that conversation um sort of uh, evaluating jfr on a couple of different you know points on the goals that i mentioned and um and yeah that's kind of what the uh what the plan is for thursday um any questions thoughts yes um i just realized that i've not been on mute so if you all have been hearing the clickety clack of a mechanical keyboard, my apologies as you we were talking. Um, uh, I, as I said, I'm about a week behind on, um, mm -hmm. on some of this stuff. So in the most recent meeting, um, uh, I, I have a question. Uh, I remember you and I at one point, or maybe in a previous tag meeting, I can't remember where, uh, we had talked about the notion of, you know, rather than trying to uh, um, force you know in terms of finding consensus for a profiling format right. uh, having sort of like um a consensus format but then as part of the, the the format of the protocol spec uh being able to define um or at least reference in a con in a consistent way uh conversion 
um, mm -hmm. lambdas or conversion uh, uh, functionlets uh, that would that would move uh, either to or from a very particular vendor specific format uh, that might have additional metadata or, or be augmented with additional stuff um, mm -hmm. you know as, as part of that so so being able to engage with this without having to change one's own uh, existing tooling mm -hmm. uh, or be constrained by it uh, has that sort of idea come up or is it still more at the at the first order you know assessment of can, can we just all agree on a format you know which, which i think is less personally I, I think is less likely just in terms of yes you, know, uh, you can't ask all these people to give up things that may be their differentiating features or, or right. what, what what makes them unique for particular scenarios they're targeting uh, for either a business or a technical solution yeah um i'm just adding the uh, video recording in the meeting notes as well to the um, oh, sweet to these meeting notes um yeah that definitely made it in so we haven't gotten down to like what that actually looks like but we did include that as one of the um four main goals uh that we have established so far um and i'll read those off now that um those goals are uh, oh, I see you're, you're, you're linking to the document. I'll put in the link that you had sent to. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, so the main goals that we kind of established that people were most interested in this new format accomplishing was one um, ability for data center slash system wide profiling, which, um, yeah, you kind of have to watch the uh, video for sort of uh, agreed terminology there on what it exactly means for um, system wide and data center, but really it just um, the the kind of uh, the closest way that I would describe it is just like the idea of like continuous profiling being the primary goal of this format, like it being able to at least support that, but at most hopefully also supporting more of a like ad hoc um, sort of instrumented profiling um, type of use case, but that the the vast majority was focused on like continuous profiling. And the idea of being able to send, um, yeah, send a lot of profiling data. Um, so that was one goal. The other goal was it being able to connect profiles to other OTEL signals. Um, so uh, logs, metrics, traces, um, this new format being something that is uh, somewhat custom built for that use case, as that's um, obviously one of the main goals of OTEL, or maybe not obviously, but yes it's one of the main goals of otel and um something that people have um, seem to be most excited about and most interested in and i'm um, sort of unifying all of their various signals in one um in one you know in one place and uh using otel as the means to do that um the third one was representing um slash transmitting profiles across native code slash runtimes that's something that uh, I think was sort of coming out of the EBPF um, contingent there of wanting to be able to represent, you know, this code, and I guess it's not necessarily EBPF, but at least those were the ones who brought it up, um, being able to say this is Python code, this is library code, kernel code, um, I guess being able to differentiate somehow um, and allowing space in the format to be able to differentiate different parts of the code um, was important to people. And then the fourth one and last one that we came up with so far, again, we may come up with more as time goes on, is the one that you mentioned, um, being able to, uh, the way we phrased it was unambiguously map existing profiling formats to this new data model, and then map from this new data model back to existing profiling formats um, and having it result in identical data. So basically making it so that this doesn't break things. And so that's kind of where, from an implementation standpoint, exactly, from an implementation standpoint, kind of what you just mentioned, that's sort of where that would come in and how are we able to, you know, what can we build on top of this mm -hmm. to make it so that, you know, for example, if we were to use something close to PProf or close to JFR or whatever format we ultimately choose, you know, 
how can we build something that can sort of flip flop between them or, or some type of tool that can go between them so that people, people's existing, you know, the Go runtime already uses PPROF, for example, Java uses JFR already. Um, you know, a lot of cloud providers, Google, or Google uh, created PPROF, so they're obviously using it, um, Datadog. So there's like a lot who are using certain formats already. And so what we don't want to do with this new format is make it so that everything is obsolete and it's a huge pain to change it, but rather make it something that will enhance and hopefully like improve upon those, one of those or all of those existing formats um, and kind of take the best of each of them and then uh, sort of unify it. Sure. Yeah, thank you for that, Ryan. I think it's helpful. Um, uh, I'll ask a couple of clarifying questions that I have personally, but I think also might be part of this conversation, sure. at least moving forward. If not, they were, or if they're already covered, perhaps you can, um, provide, you know, you summarize, but um, all of this that we've been talking about is kind of about, about the specific structure of the format of, you know, a profile report. Uh, when, it when it comes to continuous profiling or continuous uh, tracing, but I'll, I'll leave the tracing bit alone, not distributed tracing, but old school, older execution tracing, um, uh, you know, that could be viewed as, as like a series of micro batch reports like you know you can have a profiling report covering a particular time span and 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 on the wire you know it's it's little little nuggets of, of discrete reports covering some period of time uh, or it could be viewed as more of a streaming you know unbounded versus a bounded but you know rather instead of a series of bounded um, um chunks of data uh you know in, in series perhaps uh, you know, actually treating it as the unbounded data source it is, or just a continuous stream of mm. of the latest samples and or um, updates to the stream. Mm. Uh, did, did any discussion of the protocol and how, you know, um, OTLP uh, do, is or isn't on either side of that sort of protocol fence um, or other topics about wire protocol? For, for example, if you look at Avro, Right where it's it's really optimized for change detection and capture of relational databases. So you know you can almost think of every row of a table has an extremely compact ref schema or mm -hmm. reference to a schema. You know mm -hmm. the analogy being for symbolic information version or some other kind of you know schema information that describes the rest of the data. Mm -hmm. um, that's built into the format. Uh, it's sort of like a much more complicated uh, type type length value the TLV style wire protocol. Um, yeah. Has that level of protocol assessment and its suitability or potential expansion, um, has that been covered in the discussion thus far? Yeah, briefly. I mean, I would say that, I mean, yeah, we've kind of talked about, you know, things, yeah, like on the wire versus at rest, whatever. And, um, and the emphasis right now, at least, like the starting point is more just like, you know, how, yeah, from the, you know, agent to wherever this data goes, what format is it in there? And how can we design it in a way where um, we do want it to be as low overhead as possible? Because, um, you know, profiling can be a heavy thing if you do it wrong. And so, um, and the size of the data that you're sending can also um, be, you know, large compared to you know, a log or a metric or, you know, something that is a much smaller, like the unit of a profile, it just tends to be larger. And so, yeah, so we're definitely keeping all that in mind. I would say we, you know, you can only make it so small uh, because of, yeah, both the frequency of the data that many hope to be able to send this in. And then also the size, yeah, just like the natural size of what a profile is. Um, and so, you know, you can only do so much there, but the idea here is, yeah, keeping it as minimal as possible while also, you know, leaving room to, um, yeah, to, to be able to then, you know, somewhere else do more with the data, uh, you know, merge it, uh, you know, like link it to things, all that kind of stuff. And so, um, I would say it's still much earlier in the, in the discussion as it relates to, to what you're talking about, but it's definitely come up and has been sort of yeah identified as something that we have to um with whatever we come up with keep in mind um you know as we move forward 
um, which is part of what we're going to talk about on Thursday as well, actually. It's just like the current existing formats, for example, like JFR profiles can be like massive just because of, um, you know, just Java um, stuff. But, uh, but yeah, and so it's like, you know, can we use that? Like that's, you know, how feasible is that? That You know, so that's kind of the discussion that, that this Thursday will be focused on is sort of, um, you know, evaluating what is the current spectrum that this sort of like, you know, that these profiles exist on on the wire currently for whether it's PPROF or these custom formats or JFR or whatever. And then, you know, from that spectrum, we kind of have a, you know, okay, this is the maximum, we can't do that. This is the minimum, we could do that, but we're not going to be able to do as much as we want with that. So what's somewhere like in between, like, where do we evaluate these trade-offs of being able to still do what we want with the profiling data, but also have it be, um, you know, not taking up a crazy amount of yeah. bandwidth. So, so, so from reviewing the notes and from listening to you talk, uh, it sounds like if, if, if you're echoing sort of the sentiment of the, of the community or the discussion thus far, mm -hmm. um, it, it sounds like this is really uh, profiling, continuous profiling data and metadata, I suppose. Uh, is, is being thought of as a series of discrete reports of different of right formats now, that cover potentially overlapping time ranges, but it's not being considered as sort of a stream. Of, so yeah, um, as of right now, logically. I would say that is where the conversation is leaning. I mean, obviously, yeah, we haven't like, you know, and uh, there have certainly yep. been people who have voiced, you know, the opposite of that, but I would say, yeah, the, the stronger okay. consensus seems to be that direction um and but they aren't necessarily mutually exclusive i guess but as of right now as we're thinking about just like from a goal standpoint like that seems to be the bigger uh what people are more interested in the the use case that it solves is for yeah like uh, like you said kind of a bunch of uh discrete reports um, but it is possible that we find a way to sort of support both. And uh, hope, okay. Yeah. And, and has there been any? Thank you. And has there been any um, sort of specific look at in terms of implementation in the hotel collector? Uh, either you know, um, you know, what existing pieces might pick up which uh, which portions of this uh, already? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so, so how, you know, whether there are advantages, I suppose, to treating you know treating the the continuous profiling stream as a, you know, set of packetized discrete um, uh, chunks because, you know, some of the, the processing that you might want to do can be fanned out uh, horizontally, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps simpler than having like a MUX, DMUX, or a DMUX, MUX uh, a pipeline uh, approach or, or something more complicated, you know, you know, that there's also been talk stream about processing, like flank and then, and, 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 you know, approaches like that. I mean, some people do have been talking to as well about a concept of like, if we were able to find a way to make profiles slightly stateful or, or make something stateful in a way where you could do um, like symbols, basically making it easier to like deal with symbols and, and that kind of stuff. So there is a, a uh, you know, there's definitely talk about that as well. Um, but that complicates things a lot it seems and we haven't quite found a way that we could um yeah that we could make use of of that in this format right. well, i mean if every report say comes from a pod mm -hmm. right like say to, to keep it simple mm -hmm. um you know and leaving alone any kind of like rolling up or merging of reports from multiple pods in a deployment right. at the site of collection or to more, more more elaborate stuff but just if for discussion here, here, you know, not presently, <clears throat> every report comes from a pod, you know, then every report comes from a particular binary. And that particular binary really links to a particular point in time in the histories of all the constituent parts of it in terms of symbolic information, right? So um, it, it almost motivates a discussion. And I, I don't think this has come up yet, or I've, I've not seen it. Uh, but you know, you can almost have you almost now have the need for a symbolic database that kind of not only tracks, 
you know, a particular binary or, or like, you know, lookups, you know, like for this binary, give me all the symbols, you know, you could just build a giant relational store or it's other, other sort of like key value store, you know, that just gives you symbolic info for a particular binary, mm-hmm. right. And leave it at that. But that, that puts a lot of onus on any kind of tooling to make sense of it versus right. like building something a little more nuanced, like a graph backend, graph, yeah. <laughs> graph database backend that is more time traveling in nature. Right. And, 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 and not only tracks like the raw, like symbol server and other symbolic information data with database and databases typically are just that key value kind of thing, but, you know, perhaps a data store that understands the lineage uh, of things, you know, all the way to source with, with some indexing there as well. Uh, you know, so when you're looking at continuous profiling for binaries that change over time, but only in iterations, you know, you can you can almost envision one could one could imagine or envision a symbolic store backend and or source server backend that could pair with any tooling that's using these yeah. profile reports. Which is which is a yeah valid point and but, yeah, but that's not like spec out or, like, or mapped out anywhere in the hotel landscape that I know of. Right, it's just kind yeah. of been like a we don't need symbols yet. Approach. yeah everybody's kind of uh, like okay. everybody's like yeah it would be great and then it's like when it comes down to like okay but like how do you actually do that well, there's a lot there <laughs> yeah it's like that's that's a whole i think i mean yeah it seems to me that that could be a whole step because i mean i and i don't think that's a problem that's like necessarily unique to profiling like it would be nice to be able to um make use of something like that for other signals as well and so it's like you know, it, it does to me, you know, personally feel like a separate, um, like it could be its own separate sort of like working group thing to then like take all of these, you know, hotel signals and find a way to make them, you know, uh, yeah, make that all work. But uh, for now, we, that is not necessarily, or yeah, that's not really the, uh, the focus yet, just because that's a whole, that could be a whole topic in and of itself. Yeah, I put a link in the chat. I'll put it in the doc too. Like in the context of this um, uh, landscape graph, the Neo4j kind of graph database thing I've been prototyping out. Um, you know, th- there's a there's a time traveling aspect to that that I think has a lot of implications for for for, for observability tooling. Um, mm-hmm. I put a link in. Uh, it's called Time Trees. And if you, this picture's worth a thousand words, so I'll drop a picture into the, mm-hmm. and so, you know, you could build, you know, you could build into a data model for symbolic info, you know, something, something like this, right? Where you have a temporal index uh, and these time domains don't necessarily have to be, you know, wall you, clock. They can also, things? huh? You, are you showing your screen or where'd you show this? Oh, I, I, I'm not sharing my screen, but it's in the document in the uh, meeting notes. Oh, I'm looking at, I'm looking at. Um, I put a link to, so in this case, you know, the, this, this, this graphic. Ah, there it is. This comes from, um, it was a Neo4j library for indexing time, you know, when you're, when you want to, when you want to. Interesting. But anyway, these, the temporal domain, you know, like, or the indexing of this, this kind of tree around, you know, wall clock time you know, Kubernetes revision or binary revision in a list, in a lineage of, you know, this could be, you know, there's a variety of different time domains other than wall clock that, that could be, that could use the same approach, but, you know, something like this when dealing with ranges of time that you need to materialize, um, you know, if, if, you, if you build this into a, a, a property graph model um, yeah. and have that that kind of track you have you have a lot of advantages um interesting uh anyway um yeah it sounds like it's, it's, but, yeah, but it sounds like for, for, for the sake of this meeting that's not been explored yet and that's fertile yeah. ground um or a green field at least um, yeah, yeah so i would just i would just say for this meeting yeah like anyone who has you know thoughts on this and i do uh you know hope like long term that this will uh you know hopefully this group will be able to you know, help contribute in some way, like maybe, you know, as as things mature, talking with people who would be implementing this or companies who would be integrating this into their systems or something like that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to brainstorm ways of how this group could be collectively helpful in, you know, just like contributing to this effort. 
Um, but you know, in the meantime, I guess, yeah, anybody reach out or I guess any of the, the YouTube world, um, again, meetings, uh, Thursday, the 20, what is that? 23rd at 8 AM. And so if anybody wants to come, um, even just to be, be a fly on the wall and kind of just absorb sort of what we're all talking about. Um, I think it's a cool initiative and would be, would be excited to have more people involved in it. So. Hey, that's great. Uh, is there a link to the actual meeting? How, how would one actually join yeah, the meeting? I think you have, I tried to get one. My understanding is you effectively have to sign up for all hotel meetings to get one. So, uh, yeah, isn't there a Google group or something I saw? Yeah. There's a Google group for like all the hotel stuff. I can find that. Yeah. If, there's, if, if you have any just directions on like, where should someone like, I, I'll be joining. Uh, so I need to go figure this out as well, but, um, anyone that wants to join, will have to. Here is the group. I will put it in. I'll put it in right here. It's just like open telemetry dash calendar at googlegroups.com. Uh, that's an email that people send an email to, or? I think that's how you join the Google group. I think. Oh, here it is. I found it. Uh, open telemetry calendar invites yeah i'm not to be join sure. group okay oh i see so you join this group this google group which has a bunch of archived mail and now archive mail has all the calendar invites that you can add to your google calendar yeah, I mean, honestly, it might even be easier to just uh, add hotel calendar. They probably yeah, or if you have a link. Oh, is there? Yeah, but there we go. Just have like this NCF calendar. There's an hotel calendar. Yeah, there's something like that that can be found. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, here's a better link, I think. So copy link. I think that's it. Try that. Nice. I just confirmed that it works swimmingly. Cool. Okay. Okay. Well, um, unless there's anything from anybody else, I think that might be a wrap. Uh, actually starting. So technically these, the, our tag meetings are supposed to be 50 minutes long, not an hour. Uh, to my knowledge in two years, I don't think we've ever quit early, but, but once <laughs> and at 44 minutes past, we can be six <laughs> minutes early, which may be a record. Let's get it. Unless there's anything from you, Eric. No, no, I'm just listening in. Thank you. All right. For sure. All right. Well, I will talk to you all later. Okay, bye. -bye. All right. Peace. See you.